exciting discovery, and uh, we thought you'd like this uh, piece about Ohio. Uh, Senator John Glenn suggested it. Uh, good morning, Houston. Uh, yeah, it takes back home. Thank you very much. now receiving live television from uh, Discovery's cameras. Discovery Houston on Tedris East. This view from a camera that's mounted in the uh, forward right-hand corner of the cargo bay. Discovery Houston, we're getting a superb picture from the payload bay, and I can see the storm just coming into view. I envy your uh, view for real. Copy. In this view of Tropical Storm Chantal, maximum winds now about 51 miles per hour as it uh, moves to the north-northwest in the Atlantic well to the north of uh, Puerto Rico. This is Mission Control Houston. This uh, television view from Discovery is of Tropical Storm Chantal, again in the uh, Atlantic, uh, well north of Puerto Rico on a course that it will take it uh, north-northwest. Currently, uh, Chantal, as a tropical storm, has winds of about 51 miles per hour, and it's moving on its north-northwest uh, track at about 5 miles per hour.
We're ready on the mid-deck. Oh, we're ready to come aboard when you're ready. We're ready for you. Discovery Houston, three smiling faces there. Look. And we have a good uh, frame and a good uh, camera view. Discovery, you, are you ready for the event on the mid-deck? We are ready, Tom. Maddie Monfort, this is Houston. Please call Discovery for a voice check. Hello, how are you, Nancy, Don, and Mary Ellen? Good morning, how are you? Doing just fine. Before we get started, let me just tell you that the show that we, we do, we cater more to moms and children. So when you speak about what you do, as simple, in as simple terms as possible, we would really appreciate it. You bet. Okay, wonderful. So we'll just get started. I'm going to intro you right now. Um, we are speaking with Nancy Curry, Don Thomas, and Mary Ellen Weber. They are on the STS-70 mission on the Space Shuttle Discovery. They are on the mid-deck, and they're ready to speak to us right now. Hello, and thank you for being with us. Thank you for allowing us uh, to come down and be with you this morning. We're just having a wonderful time after our launch uh, two days ago from the Kennedy Space Center. We had just a spectacular launch. We had the deployment of the tracking and data relay communication satellite on our first day, and we've just uh, been having a very successful mission up to this point. Now, we were originally going to speak to you a few weeks back, and, of course, that mission was delayed. Can you give us a little insight on what happened? Discovery Houston, uh, we're not getting Don's downlink. Can you try the mic again? Okay, do I ask the question again? May I ask the question again? Discovery, uh, that last sure. question did not come down, so would you uh, give the answer again? Yeah, basically the reason for our uh, delay of one month was because of a woodpecker. There were two woodpeckers that were poking holes in our external tank. They made a number of holes, about 197 of them. We had to roll back to the vehicle assembly building to patch the holes, and uh, we rolled back out to the pad, launched about a month late, but here we are successfully on orbit. Did that make you any more nervous to go up in space than you probably already feel? Uh, no, I don't think so. We've been training very hard for this mission for about a year, and we're ready. And, and it's part of the business. Sometime, uh, sometimes weather is going to get in your way, and uh, sometimes it might be woodpeckers, or uh, sometimes it might just be equipment failures. But, um, you know, we, we believe our space program is really safe, and uh, we were ready to go. Uh, all three of you right now are on the mid-deck of the aircraft. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do there? Basically, the mid-deck is part of where we work and where we sleep and where, where we eat and also where we exercise. We have a uh, bicycle, which uh, does not have a seat on it because we don't need one in zero-G, just have a seat back on it, and we exercise uh, at least once a day on orbit. But we have a whole variety of experiments we've been keeping very, very busy, uh, and uh, we also have several experiments that we're running from the flight deck. Most of those are camera-oriented and are taking up most of the windows on the flight deck. Now, people are interested in your day-to-day -day activities on board the shuttle, Discovery. Um, for example, what did you eat today? Oh, there's the, your... Well, this morning I had Rice Krispies for breakfast, and for lunch I had uh, some barbecued beef and a tortilla. What's that? Is it good? It's actually pretty good. What I'm holding here is some shrimp cocktail that we just mix with a little bit of cold water, and that's one of our favorites. And I'm holding some chocolate instant breakfast, which I had this morning. And uh, it's actually very good, and we all get to select our own menu. Yeah. We got to speak with uh, um, most of your family members this morning, and aside from 
missing them, what is the thing that you miss the most about not being on earth? <laughs> well, you hit the nail on the head. The thing we do miss most is our families back on earth. Other than that, it's, you know, getting out and being able to take a walk around the neighborhood, enjoying the, you know, fresh air and a cool breeze in your face. But to make up for that, we got a spectacular view out the window here. Yes, can we take a look at where you're flying over right now? Is that possible? So we're going to, uh, it's a little bit of, uh, of what you what you can see from the shuttle as we speak. Well, currently we're in the middle of a night pass uh, over Southeast Asia, just go going over uh, approximately Indonesia. I'm not sure you'd be able to see much out of our payload bay cameras. Mm -hmm. It's it's dark, but we can uh, get a sense. The top part, of course, is the Earth. Most of our flight, we uh, fly facing with our payload bay facing the Earth. So as we look out the overhead windows of the shuttle, we're looking down at the Earth. Uh, however, last night we were flying with the nose of the orbiter down, and uh, so we were actually looking at the forward windows of the orbiter down at the Earth. And for the first time, I think some of us got the sensation of falling towards the Earth. It was quite interesting. What does that sensation feel like? Well, basically, uh, you know, floating here in zero gravity, you feel quite comfortable from the time the main engines cut off, you let go, and you just float around, as long as you don't get a rate on yourself. <laughs> this is a question for Nancy and Marilyn. Maybe you're the best to answer this. Do you have bad hair days up in space? <laughs> Every day on orbit is a bad hair day. Do you know that as, I, as I've spent a couple of days here at NASA, I've, I've just been so impressed by what a great personality the astronauts that I've spoken to um, have. Aside from your technical skills and the academics that you must know to get to where you are, is personality a big, big part of you getting where you are? Well, we would like to think so, of course, but uh, uh, the selection, uh, a large part of it is based on a one-hour interview with the selection and they hold their cards pretty close, and they tend not to talk about what exactly they're looking for in the personalities, but uh, certainly uh, being able to take the initiative and uh, demonstrating that you can work with others and things like that, uh, you know, we have to believe that that does come into play. Mm -hmm. Now, Mary Ellen, I know you're adventurous as well. You're a competitive skydiver with 1,900 jumps under your belt. How does that thrill compare to the one you're living right now? Well, I have to say no. <laughs> it's, uh, this is pretty awesome. This is really pretty remarkable, um, although I really do enjoy jumping. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you do for fun? You said you have, you have some time to exercise, but other than that, what is your, your off time like? What do you do? We really haven't had a whole lot of off time this far uh, in the mission, and so I think every possible opportunity that we have, particularly during meal times, You'll find five noses pressed up against the window looking at the most spectacular view we'll ever see in our lives. Yes. Now, um, Nancy, we got a chance to speak with your eight-year-old daughter this morning, Stephanie, who was on our show last fall when Mike, my co-host, interviewed you. And she said to me that she would love to see herself and, and your dog, Augie, up in space sometime. things that you all do in weightlessness? I mean, right now, obviously, you are hanging on to, what exactly are you hanging on to? Okay, let us give you a short demonstration of something we were showing a couple of the new guys last night. It'll take just a second. Oh, what are you eating there? gymnast, Nancy. Um, wonderful. Now, if you all had a chance to live up in the space station for a year where you wouldn't be able to see your husbands and your children and your wives, 
Would you take that, that opportunity? That's a great question. Uh, I sure would like to bring them along if we could do that, and hopefully one day in the future we'll be able to bring our families along on longer voyages into space. Mm -hmm. Mary Ellen, did you want to answer that? Uh, no, I agree. I would go. Uh, I would certainly go on the space station, and uh, you know, with or without my family, but I would certainly rather have them along. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about, um, in the simplest of terms, what your responsibilities are aboard the Discovery. My particular responsibilities are mission specialist too. All three of us are mission specialists. Mission Specialist 2 is the flight engineer on the flight, so I was sitting center seat between Tom Hendricks, the commander, and Kevin Kriegel, the pilot, all the way during the ascent, and Don was sitting to my right. And it was, uh, it was really spectacular. Don and I both had out mirrors so that when the mid-engines lit, we could actually see some of the flames. As we rolled heads down, we could see the Earth start to go by. And, uh, and then, of course, all of our concentration was on the forward portion of the cockpit, monitoring all our uh, instruments on board. Mm -hmm. My main responsibility was deploying the TDRS satellite, our tracking and data relay satellite that we deployed on day one. In addition to that, I'm responsible for a number of the smaller mid-deck experiments that we're flying in this mission, and I'm one of the uh, two crew members who would go out and do a spacewalk in case we had some kind of emergency or contingency and needed to go outside to fix something on the orbiter. Mm -hmm. And my role is pretty similar to Don's. I was helping him out with the deploy, uh, as well as working on some of the mid-deck experiments, and I'm the other crew member that would go out and do a spacewalk if we needed to do that. Bob Cabana, the head of the uh, astronaut program here at, uh, at NASA, told me that the single most important piece of equipment that all of you have is your spoon. <laughs> we knew he was going to say that. <laughs> Where are yours? Are you, do you have them handy? You bet. We never leave home without it. There they go, and, and, and Don has two of them. He's ready. Well, I'll, that way we can hold them for ransom if someone loses theirs. <laughs> Do you get a, a lot of, t of chance to talk to one another, or is it basically difficult to speak up there where you can hear each other clearly? I know we can hear each other very, very clearly. It's kind of like... Um, you know, having a fan on in, in a room, and uh, you might have to talk just a little bit louder, but you can hear uh, just as well as on the ground. Mm -hmm. We uh, we got to speak to uh, your husband, Nancy. We didn't get to speak to yours, Mary Ellen, because I know he's still in Florida. But I was curious, when you both were single, um, did you intimidate men because you were astronauts? Was that an intimidating factor in, in the dating process? Well, as you know, if you spoke to my husband, he's an Army helicopter pilot, and uh, I met him when he was teaching me how to fly one of the Army's newest helicopters, the Black Hawk. And so I don't think he was intimidated at all because I was a pilot just like he was. And uh, so it's quite interesting because he can understand my job very well, and he's tremendously supportive. Mm -hmm. How about you, Mary Ellen? Uh, no, I've actually, uh, I was actually dating my husband for many years before I became an astronaut, so uh, I'm not real certain if anybody was intimidated or not. Mm -hmm. Don? He certainly wasn't. He wasn't. Now, Don, um, was being an, astro an astronaut a, a babe magnet for you? <laughs> I'm a happily married man, and... Uh, <laughs> I'd have to say absolutely not, no. Right. No, but I meant, I meant before you were married. That's, uh, that's why I got married here. <laughs> well, we got a chance to uh, meet your baby, Kai, and we got a chance to spend time with Simone. And for you, Nancy, we, have, we got a, a chance to speak with your husband and your daughter. They're all doing really, really well. Is there something you would like to say to them? Boy, sure, to uh, Kai and to my wife, Simone, I love you, I miss you very much, and I can't wait to see you next Friday at landing time. Love you. And to Dan and Stephanie, I love you with all my heart, 
And don't eat too much pizza before I get back. <laughs> and once again, I guess I have to say, um, just I love you a lot, Jerry, and I can't wait to see you. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand that all of you swapped rings with your husbands or your, or your wives. Do you have them on you right now? Well, you know, I know they're missing you. Bet. I know they're missing you and they love you. And from down here on earth, we, uh, we send you the very best wishes and we, we hope you get back safely on Friday. God bless. Thank you very much, Maddie. Give my best to Mike. We enjoyed meeting him in Houston. Sure will. Good luck to all of you. Thank you. Discovery, we have picture. Okay. Don Carrico will be very happy to know that we are cleaning the windows just like you taught us here. And the next thing you'll see is uh, Don and Tom in the back doing some art bobs. And we, you know, as you, you're very well familiar with, we had some uh, fantastic passes today over the U.S. And we also were able to capture Hurricane Chantal. You can also see the sixth crew member on board in this view. And just to the right of Woody, you can see the MCC plaque in honor of the first flight control that is the new MCC. And that's a great shot, Discovery. Discovery. Tom, as you might imagine, it was quite the photo frenzy as we came over the hurricane today, including one crew member with one ergometer shoe on and one shoe off. That sounds like uh, just about the scene uh, that we're familiar with from last year. So the other interesting thing is that between Windex, Hercules, and Sarex, uh, the windows have been kind of hard to come by during this flight. Yeah, that's one thing we appreciate looking at the timeline is how difficult it is to work all of those payloads with the windows SIMO. That's firm, and this is a picture of Tom and I doing Hercules activation, and uh, this is just one part of Hercules, the half and the IBM ThinkPad computer, and you'll see the actual camera coming to view in just a little bit. This camera on the ground weighed approximately 70 pounds, and it was uh, quite difficult to train with, particularly for star alignments, to hold this device over your head and uh, be able to get an alignment within 0 .05 degrees. We had some difficulty with the alignment today, mostly due to the stabilization of the camera because it is so large. And there's the camera that I'm holding right now. So Zybion camera, which is a multi-spectral imaging intensifier camera, and it's got its own alignment system that's a canister on top and then a view cam attached to that. Discovery, we really see how that uh, space is a premium working with the camera and a couple of crew members. Yeah, that's why at the last minute the PAO event was from the mid-deck. Roger that. <laughs> 